It's a joke. It's a little joke. Later on, we meet one of the leading figures in the free software movement. Oh, yes. Big Richard. He's fantastic. Um, he really is very... He's huge. Very, very huge. In the world of passive resistance, Mahatma Gandhi was king. In the world of Silicon Valley, girls whose breasts go like that get a lot of attention. But in the world of free software, Richard Stallman is an absolute hero. He started the free software movement and created the GPL, which is basically the GPL, and it's a totally different way of looking at copyright or copyleft. Right, Richard, firstly, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us. I want to slightly get into that, that whole, uh, this whole uh, argument between free versus open source. A lot of people say free software is open source, but not necessarily all open source software is free. Well, I don't really like to talk very much about open source. It's a shallower view of the work that we do, where we say that software must, ethically must, respect your freedom and respect specifically your freedom to cooperate with other people and as a community take control of your computers. They just say that if people let you look at the source code and change it, it'll make the software technically better. Well, that may be true, but it's less important. Imagine people arguing about whether free elections where everyone's allowed to vote would be better or worse for the economy. They're missing the point. What would you say to people who don't want to use the term free because it implies free of charge? I mean, take Microsoft who say, yeah, free like a puppy. Well, they're just being silly. You know, people are well aware that free software means free as in free speech, not free as in free beer. It only takes about three seconds to say that to people. And it isn't hard for them to understand. Bill Gates said that how on earth do you expect to make money out of this? You know, as a programmer, you'd, you, you, you'd study for this, and you're making a, the equivalent of two, uh, $2 an hour. Why would we be concerned about this question? There's a whole implicit chain of reasoning that they expect you to, to rush through in your head without looking at it carefully. So let's look at it slowly so we can see where its weaknesses are. They first expect you to assume that unless people are well paid to write software they won't do it that's where their assumption starts so then they expect us to want to have lots of software and that's all we want they assume we don't care if that software respects our freedom or takes away our freedom just as long as it's there and it runs the first of these assumptions is factually false there are about a million developers of free software now now, the second assumption is about what our values are. And of course, your values could be different from my values, but I'll just tell you that my values are, I don't want software if it doesn't respect my freedom. In fact, I so much don't want it that I won't take it. If somebody offers me a program, but only on a condition that I promise I will not share it with you, then I'm going to tell him no. I'm gonna tell him that to be a good neighbor, I have to refuse that software, and I will refuse it. 